This is John Tierney of Rewinder.com and uh, thinking about the article written by Anne, Dr. Anne Do- Dolan in this morning's Irish Times. Um, she got me to pull out my copy of Tommy Mooney's book, Cry of the Curly. And there's a few things I just want to look at here and uh, review in this, um, this great book. Um, the key thing that comes to mind from reading Anne's article is the Pil- Piltown Ambush. The ambush happened in on the 1st of November 1920 and Tommy gives a good, in his book, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 and a half um, pages to the ambush and he also reconstructs the events with this uh, very clear map. Um, the first ambush uh, happening at the start of November 1920 was a success for the West Waterford Brigade. And if you read Tommy's account, um, you'll see you'll see why. It covered an area, from what I can see, the full activity is covered over 10 miles, uh, if not slightly more, with action stretching from Gyosh Bridge, or potential action stretching from Gyosh Bridge to cut off the Capricorn contingent to the diversionary attack in uh, Ardmore on the RIC barracks the main attack at Piltown. If you're on the N25 nowadays heading for between Dungarvan and Yall, you're quite close to Piltown if, uh, when you pass the Apple Green petrol station. Now, uh, Tommy's book is a fantastic example of local historians doing their own thing, telling their own stories, telling their family stories. And uh, he builds uh, a chronology of events. Uh, he, he, he goes through it uh, time-wise. Uh, but he also gathers up local knowledge, talks to local people because he's of the local families he's greatly accepted and uh, one of the key things he's been able to do is build up this uh, this database of uh, photographs of the volunteers who took part in the war of independence and um, he also gathers their names people from Kilossera, Clane, Dungarvan, Bellyduff, Turinina, Kinsilabeg, Ring, all the key names come to Waterford uh, West Waterford in particular, and Tommy has gathered all that while telling the story. Now, what I like about the way he approaches the story is that he's very much focused on where events happened and who they happened to, if I can put it that way. And this, uh, it, it relates to a common history and it relates to a way of telling history. Uh, like here, here he's talking about there was a problem of fraternisation with the Marines who were stationed in Ardmore village. And he lists some of those Marines. I don't know where he got the names now, I must ask him, but Lofty Quinn. Buck Taylor, and one named Pete Preston, uh, enjoyed going down to the pub in Ardmore, and uh, some of the locals weren't happy with that because some of their neighbours were fraternising with him, um, men and women, and Tommy covers a little bit of that. So it, I, I think the history is interesting because it would be great to actually track down these this Mr Quinn and uh, Taylor and Preston, uh, where, they're, where are their offspring today? Do they realise that their uh, their predecessors were based here in Ardmore? Now, the successful um, uh, ambush in Piltown was balanced by a later ambush or a surprise capture of the uh, Piltown, um, the uh, part of the brigade uh, were carrying out actions against uh, British Army forces built in Yall, and they subsequently got caught by caught by a surprise attack in Piltown, in a in a village. Um, people who were captured and court-martialed were Willie Doyle, Jimmy Fitzgerald, Bob Foley, Billy Kiley, Patsy Veal, Tom Veal, John Veal and Martin Fitzgerald. So the Piltown Company were uh, rendered ineffective from this time onwards. And this actually happened in, when was it, the 30th of June 1921. So, um, 30th of June 1921, there it is, yeah. IRA captured at Piltown. So Tommy, he gave eight and a half pages to the previous ambush. This 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 return fixture, as it were, uh, gets about a page. Now, if you read the whole of the book, it's just one fantastic story after another. But the most striking bit to to my to my ears, to my mind, is his epilogue, where he actually recounts a personal memory of ni- a commemoration in 1967, where the old comrades got together and it had a uh, an electrifying effect um, uh, uh, in terms of what happened. 
the old, uh, they were trying to gather the old comrades and people were being shy and shuffling their feet. And this is how Tommy describes it. But Mick Mansfield and a few lieutenants such as Eddie Spratt and Paddy Ormond had been moving through the crowd, pushing and cajoling the old men into a semblance of a phalanx. They were still surrounded by and part of the crowd. The former brigadier, Pax Whelan, was standing on a grassy bank on the edge of the crowd, gesturing to individuals to gather in. Then, Tommy says, to my amazement, my father, the stubborn, independent man who had been standing beside me, turned without a word and obediently joined the throng. His acceptance of the old discipline was remarkable, as indeed was that of all the old comrades assembled there. After a few minutes, while he reported the readiness of the group to Pax, McMansfield then stood back on the flank. Suddenly, sharply and clearly audible above the noise of the crowd, came his shouted command, Pride! Pride! Ara! As one, these elderly men came upright to attention. The onlookers scattered from them like chaff in the wind, leaving them standing there in splendid isolation. Pride! Ar clay! Catopig! Mar! Shoil! A fantastic account there by Tommy. It was his own account. He was there. He saw it happen, stunned by his father's own involvement. And when I see that kind of writing, it makes, strikes me that local history really, it turns on a switch that all history should really be trying to reach out and, and flick at the same time to engage people, um, to make them realise that this is our history, no matter what side we're on, whether we're Marines, our family were Marines in the bar in Ardmore, or if we actually rendered some service to the state. As, as did his father. Okay, so it's a great book, Cry of the Curlew, by Tommy Mooney, and just reminds us of so much of the importance of history for our communities.